Lake Double Young, the scene of Sir Donald Campbell's victory race. And you certainly can't trust the uh, GPS's sometimes, so it's, and Google, they and, can send and, you in circles. And you can't trust these people with cameras, they'll film you when you don't, when you least expect it. Is it on? I, I'm not telling. <laughs> we uh, can find out later when I plug it into your TV. Right. Oh, I hope you can plug it into my TV, it's a bit of a dinosaur. Oh yeah, it works back to about 1950s. Oh. Doing what? Spraying our biodynamic, our biodynamic spray, which yeah. is the um, microbial spray. Because, and how, how long ago did you put the crop in? Uh, well, April? No, some of, it, some of it was in, we finished seeding just over a week ago, and that's yeah. just starting to come out of the ground now. Yeah, beautiful. Which is quite good for only being a week in the yeah. ground. Yeah. And we've spaced the seeding out over a few weeks, just so that it um, mitigates the risk of frost and yeah. anything like that. Okay, now this is your, did you manufacture this or buy it? No, we, we yeah, I just, we have bought this this year off another biodynamic farmer who sold out, he sold his farm, yeah. and the, they're the stirring machines up the top, they oh, stir the... That's the, uh, that's the, that's the source. Yeah, so we have, you have warm water in there and you put the um, preparation 500 in there and it gets stirred with the... the at what at what at what point do you start with the uh, cow's horn? We'll be burying the cow's horns in the next couple of weeks. Oh, this is precious. Yeah, so we haven't started yet, but that's um, yeah because we we do make bury our own cow horns because we've yeah. got cows, and and then we buy the the preparations from over east and add them in, and then yeah. yeah it's, it's corner here, but there's a fair bit of. A fair bit of junk lying around. Oh, we well. like that. We like a little bit of homely junk. Oh, well, it's in the, in the process of cleaning up and, and shifting everything. And after seeding, we've had, got lots of stuff lying around after seeding. <laughs> I know what you mean. But this is, oh, this is your purpose-built shed now? Yeah, well, this is... The, now, it, was, it was just a, a shed was here that we cemented it and um, put, the, put the doors, sliding doors and stuff on. That is nectar of the gods to see that in a new location because it's been a year and a bit since you brought it down here with this, your mate Semi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and I can see where you're at. You've got it. Um, yeah, it the, the, how did you do it? What, what, is that off an old header or something? This is off an old harvester. So this was, yep. this was a, a, a screen. Um, yep. in, oh, you can't see it from down here. But no. But there I'm, is a rotating screen on the top. Um, right. Perforated screen. Yeah. And uh, what yeah. drives it? What What's your motor? An electric. Just an electric motor. Just a little. Because uh, uh, I've, yeah. I've, I've got pulleys and things off it at the moment. Yeah. Um, just changing the configuration. Or well, you can see from this end, right? Oh. If you have a look. Yeah, you can see the screen. Oh yeah, I can see a screen now. And it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that all? So it's going in one end and coming out the other. Yeah. So it goes in the top and comes yeah. out here. Fabulous. Um, and it's got another one. And it looks as though it's got some very lovely bearings as well. Original bearings off the header, and the, the, so they're 30 years old. Would that, you don't like being unre over rehearsed. That's enough. Done any more? On. All right. <laughs> There hasn't been a necessity. It hasn't been, haven't had time, it hasn't been a priority. Okay, is this going to be the uh, grand entrance here? Yes, this is the grand entrance. So it's a bit messy here. Oh, yes. And I had a window fall out because I hadn't fixed it in properly or got around to finishing it, but other than that. It needs a good clean up. Leone's on my case to um, 
get in here and give everything a clean up, which I want to do as well. You've got a fridge up here. Is that a fridge? Ah, uh, no, that's just a um, cupboard. cupboard. Um, but we sort of can't because they it'll disturb them a bit much, and you run the risk of are you leaving a newborn lamb or that sort of thing. Well, what a beautiful bit of country. Yeah, it is nice. It's Un undulating and um, those trees on that hill. Is Have we come from that farm over there? Or is that another farm? No, that's our neighbouring farm. Yeah. Neighbour farm, yeah. right. Because I didn't keep track of, of so we, going. Yeah, we came from it over there. Yeah, over so. there. And is, is that your... That's your ploughing? That is that the soft wheat? That's barley in there. We'll have a look on the way back past. We'll oh, sure. Get out and have a look. Because right. it's just coming up there. Yeah. And that's our, our paddock out the back. There's oats on the far side and there's soft wheat on this side. Right. It's quite a big paddock that one. But I'll drive over a bit closer and see if she'll stand up because the lamb's out so far that it's either all the way out or it needs to fall out. She needs to try and keep pushing it. Right. Because she shouldn't be um, taking it so easy at the moment. Otherwise all she'll relax and tighten up and it, it won't fall out as easy. So it could be, could be still born. Yeah, I would say so by the look of her and the fact that she hasn't, I don't think she's quite birthed it fully yet, but she should have, it should, she shouldn't, she shouldn't stop, she was there when we came out so she's been sitting there not doing anything for quite a while and really she should have. Uh, Yeah. But when that's the thing is if if they are giving birth and they lie down, the lamb doesn't have the weight pulling itself out. Yeah. So she might have just laid down a couple of minutes too early, and um, if she had to stayed standing up, it might have just dropped out and been alive and been quite alright. The dog seems to participate with you. Yeah. Well, it was, what they, do they think? Well, it's handy having them in case she started running, but she didn't look like she was going to run very fast. So that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it has. It seemed as though the dogs were with, with you, like a team. Yeah, well, they knew that there was something up yeah, with her, and especially when that, I got out. That's incredible. Yeah, they. Yeah, but fancy you, Jamie. You're doing the job of um, places that charge, like vets, <laughs> thousands of dollars to come out here. Like, what were the if if you couldn't do it yourself? A vet would have charged 500 or 1,000 
to come out here and and deal with a, a situation like that but you have to learn it yourself yeah well it's you just learn it as you you see your dad do it and all that sort of yeah. thing and quite often it, it works quite well you know if the lamb had been facing the other way and had its leg stuck we could have just pulled them out pulled the lamb out lamb would have been alive yeah. but you would have you, you mm. put the lamb on the mother so that the, yeah. the smell gets and you put a bit of afterbirth in her mouth and she oh, right. get that stimulates her licking oh, uh, reflex and then yeah. she'll lick the lamb and clean it up and then yeah. it, and that stimulates the lamb then the lamb will stand up and have a drink it's amazing to see it so what will you do with that lamb in the back uh, I left it there because it's then that way at least the foxes and the crows and the eagles oh, can eat it fair enough in case Beautiful. maybe eating a, a live one yep, yep. or eating a weak other lamb or something well needed that's great what amazes me, Murray, is with molting, we... About molting? It takes six or so days to get the acrospire to have grown the length of the grain. Yes. Before we kiln it. Yet this grain had... was already poking out of the ground after seven days. You know, it already had a shoot on wow. it. Wow, yes, I see what you mean. It's just amazing how they... It, it performs differently when it's in the soil. And you know, the roots on it were this long by the time it started poking out of the ground. Well, I'll, I thought, I'll dig a little. I, yeah, show me. So I can dig oh. up sunlight on it. Yeah, yeah. How old do you think that is? Well, it's been out of the ground for a couple of days. So this is probably one of the ones that was just poking out of the ground after a week. And the seed was down that far. So it's come up a long way. Yes. Right. And it's, yeah, it's got plenty of energy and it's got all these roots on it as well. I've so you're saying it's amazing stuff. that it performs more vigorously in the soil. Yeah. With the cold, in, in what we call, that would be really chilling temperature overnight. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, the, the seed must be a little bit insulated just because it's down under the soil. A, a little bit. But the ones on top would be a lot colder. Yeah. So doesn't that tell you that you could really re redesign, you should redesign the mulching process to emulate what really happens in the soil? Okay. And, and you might, of course, you don't want it to grow that far no. uh, when you're mulching. You, you still only want it to grow, what is it, about three quarters of the way up the, um, yeah, so the grain. Five mils, four or five mils or something. Then what do you think happened... Here on those first uh, day or two when the chit formed, what do you think happened? I mean, do you think it was still faster under the ground at that cold temperature? I don't know. You'd think it must have been. Because it makes you think that uh, we're doing the molting wrong because we're keeping the temperature around think... around uh, 16 to 20 is the ideal molting temperature. Is whether, that right? Yeah, and it must, uh, whether it's biological interactions between the soil and the seed. I think that might have a lot to do with it. Yeah, no, I you think know, just that's the a... soil around it instead of having other yeah. grain and other air and um, you know other. I think that's a great question because yeah. it throws you back to reality of uh, what's really happening. Makes you ask yourself. Um, um, we we think it, we would think it was cold if you malted it yeah. at that temperature of extinguisher. All the safety gear. Hello. They knew where to go. But they've been wanting to get back into this. How did they know where to go? Well, they know they're not meant to be out here. <laughs> they've never walked through the gate before, so they've never been in this. I think that was rem remarkable. And even the dogs know they've got to get back. <laughs> 